Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to our Bible devotional, our Wednesday night Bible devotional online. So glad, once again, that we can connect together on this Wednesday evening. I want to share just a couple of things with you that are coming our way at our Leader First Assembly, and that is, we are looking forward to a great Easter Sunday. You just don't want to miss it. We'll be having an illustrated sermon, and you just don't want to miss that. It's going to really be a great time, illustrated sermon on how he changed my life. And then we're also really excited and looking forward to a, to a, a very meaningful Good Friday worship and communion service. That's, of course, on Good Friday at 7 o'clock. And then on Sunday, we again, we'll have a great, great Easter Sunday with a lot of special activities for all the boys and girls. So we look forward to just gathering together as a church and just rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that it means to you and to me. Well, this evening I want to just share uh, one of my favorite passages of Scripture because I've seen it, uh, how would I say it? I've seen it, the, the fruit of this passage of Scripture in my life, both Terry and I, many, many, many times as individuals and also as a couple and family. And the passage of Scripture is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And I want to read that. Again, it's going to be a familiar, familiar portion of Scripture to you, I'm sure. But it says this here. Paul said, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Then he goes on to say, And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. He says this here. He said, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. He says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, I've got to ask you a question. Now, if a farmer goes out with a trailer load of tomato seeds and he plants them in a barren field, my question is to you, what kind of fruit do you expect will come forth from what he has sown. What do you think he's expecting? If you were planting it, what would you be expecting? Would you expecting there to be a field of watermelons? I don't think so. Or cucumbers? No. Um, that farmer, and if you're that farmer, you're going to expect to get a crop. Uh, uh, your, your crop would just be huge, a huge crop of tomatoes, because that's what you planted. Now, he doesn't doubt it. The farmer doesn't doubt it. If you're planting seed, you don't doubt that you're going to get back what you're planting. Uh, he doesn't even question it. The farmer doesn't. Because he knows this law of the harvest. He knows the law of sowing and reaping. Because whatever you plant is exactly what you're going to get back. Now, this is just the law of, of reproduction. And it applies, listen... Because this is, I, I think, a, an important principle for us to grasp. It, do, it, it doesn't just apply to the, the planting of seeds uh, to grow fruit or vegetables. No, it applies to every single area of your life and my life. Especially in your finances. But not just in your finances. Now this passage of scripture is, uh, is talking about finances, how we handle our monies, and what we give, what we invest in, those kinds of things. But listen, it goes, I, I believe the principle is true for every area of our lives. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7, I'm going to read it again. If you have your Bible, you might want to read it with me. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap, what? Sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And then he goes on to say, which is important, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not somebody playing on your emotional you know, strings or on your heart or you know, you're showing pictures of just some really sad situations and circumstances. And then they ask you in the heels, hey, can you give right now? Well, no, no, no. Uh, Paul is saying this here in the scripture, that you should give what you've decided in your heart. Plan it. Plan it. I do that myself. Our home, we've done that. We've planned. We, uh, we know that the first part of that, 
of our of our income, that 10%, it goes to the Lord. We've planned to give to missions. We plan to give to other types of ministries as well. Teen Challenge uh, is, is close to our hearts. Uh, we give to parachurch organizations as well. But listen, plan what you're getting. Don't just give spur of the moment. Now, that may happen. Now, there are times when I will be in a service or a mission service and, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give on the spot kind of a thing. But for the most part, you know, you want to plan. So this, is what I, this is how I'm going to worship the Lord with what he's blessed me with. So he said, plan what you've decided in your heart. And then once you've decided that, don't, don't be giving reluctantly. Like, oh boy, oh boy, I, I guess I've got to give this here. Uh, I, I, boy, I've got to invest this money in the offering. No, no, no. He said, don't give reluctantly and don't give under compulsion. Again, don't be uh, l allowing somebody to play on your heartstrings uh, just to get a dollar. Um, we hear stories all the time of, you know, of, of, of a person coming into a church and playing on the heartstrings of folks and, and leaving, and you think, wow, I wished I was leaving in the vehicle he was leaving in. Or we see something in television and we want to give to it until we find out the rest of the story that, uh, that really, uh, you know, a very small percentage of that dollar actually gets to where you want it to get to. And so, you know, don't give reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Plan. Plan it. Be determined that I'm going to worship God with 10% of my income, the tithe. I'm going to worship God with offerings of praise. There may be a, a special service. We do this uh, at least once or twice a year when the Teen Challenge Choir comes and they share testimonies with us. And then we take a special offering. That's above your tithe and above your regular missions giving um, and, it's, and it's a joy to worship the Lord with what He has blessed us with. Now, again, this can work. This law of the harvest can work either positively or it can work negatively in your life. If you're planting kindness, what are you going to reap? Oh, you're right, kindness. If, uh, if you are forgiving to others, what are you going to be receiving back? Well, people are going to forgive you too. Um, if he works on the negative side too. If you're a gossip, people are going to talk about you. I promise. I've seen it happen time and time again. Um, so you, know, you don't want to do that because you're going to get it back. Uh, if you're angry uh, with people, uh, you're going to find that coming back to you. So uh, so works both ways. If you're going to be generous with folks, if you're going to share your talents and your abilities and worship God with those. Um, he's going to give you more. He's going to give you more. And, uh, and so we want to remember that. Now, the law of reproduction, it says you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. And then there's the principle of multiplication. Multiplication. And it says this here, that you always reap. That's absolutely true. You always reap. But here it is. But you always reap more than what you've planted more than what, you, than what you've sown. So when you put one cor kernel of corn, that uh, kernel of corn in the ground, and you cover it up with dirt, you, you water it, you cultivate, you plant, you, you take care of it, all of a sudden that uh, a little shoot of, of uh, that little shoot all of a sudden turns into a corn stalk, and all of a sudden you see ears of corn on that corn stalk, and on each in each ear of corn that you pull off, you can pull back the leaves on it, and you'll find that there are scores of kernels on that. So out of one, you know, planting that one uh, kernel of corn, all of a sudden it multiplies. It multiplies greatly, and really that's the way it is with, uh, with us. When we plant, we're going to, to reap what we have sown, but not just that, we're going to reap more than what we have sown. If you're generous with God, don't think for a second that He doesn't take notice of it. And He will not only bless your efforts and your investment and your worship to Him, 
but he will cause it to multiply. And again, this passage of scripture I know is speaking to, to our finances, but I want you to know the, uh, the talents and the abilities that God has given to you when you, when you invest them in people, you invest them in the Lord's church. He, uh, he gives back to you. Um, you'll experience a manifold blessing from the Lord. And that's why, you know, for me, I'm not one that's really nuts about chatting about other people or getting mad with other people or that or angry with, a, you know. Uh, because listen, uh, first of all, it's just not Christ-like. But beyond, beyond that too is uh, there's payday. You know, do you want that coming back to you? And do you want it coming back to you multiplied? And so let's just make sure our hearts are, uh, are right before the Lord. And let's treat people the way we would want to treat people. And let's sow kindness into people. Let's sow generosity into people. Let's uh, be loving toward other people as well. And, uh, and why would we do that? Well, of course, because... It's pleasing to the Lord, but we'd like to see that come back to us as well. Um, now, Proverbs in chapter 11, verse number 24 says, The world, listen, this is great. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Proverbs eleven twenty four. that's God's word. That's a, a biblical principle. A biblical principle. You're kind with others, your territory increases. You're stingy with others, your territory gets smaller and smaller. Let me just ask a couple of questions for us to kind of think about tonight as we retire for the evening. Uh, let me ask this question. How, and this is pertaining to this passage of scripture, how have you seen the principle of multiplication applied in your life personally? Another question, what is it that you expect from your investments? Money, yes. Your tithes, your offerings, your giving, your, your investing of your talents and your abilities. Um, what is it that you expect to get from your investments and how are you sowing so that you can receive and what you expect to reap? And then the last thing is, how do you want God to make your world, your territory, larger. Proverbs 11.24 says the world of the generous gets bigger and bigger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. So what do you need to change about your finances and about investing what God has blessed you with so that he can increase your influence and he can increase your giving? Let's look to the Lord together. Thank you, Lord, for this passage of scripture. And thank you for speaking to our hearts, Lord, in relation to this extremely uh, important principle of investing and giving, uh, Lord, of our finances, being, being worshipers with what you've blessed us with. Not just our finances, but also with the talents and abilities that you've blessed us with as well. Lord, I pray that you would bless each of our friends this evening, that you'd give them all a great night's rest, and he, uh, bless them with health and strength and bless their day tomorrow. And uh, Lord, we'll be so thankful for it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, everyone.